Hello everyone. Welcome to another lecture on Madison with Fabra. Cortic auscultation forms an important part of physical examination. To be able to recognize the heart murmur is a highly sought after skill. But as important as it is, a lot of doctors struggle to recognize them. In this video tutorial, interactive case scenarios are presented where you will be asked to recognize a heart sound. Then we will discuss their characteristic features and correlate them with their echocardiographic findings. So listen to this heart sound. A 37 year old female patient presents with palpitations. She has a history of rheumatic heart disease. You auscultate her chest and this is what you hear. So this is holosystolic murmur of mitral regurgitation. The murmur of chronic MR is classically holosystolic, from S1 all the way to S2, and plateau shaped. In an acute setting, it can be early systolic with decrescendo character. The murmur of MR has a blowing musical quality. It is loudest at the apex and radiates to the axilla, except in isolated posterior leaflet MR where it radiates anteriorly to the base of the heart and may be confused with the murmur of aortic stenosis. But again, correlate the murmur with other findings. Listen again to a patient with the murmur of mitral regurgitation. In mitral regurgitation, the mitral valve leaflets don't close properly, leading to regurgitation of blood from left ventricle into left atrium during systole, as can be seen here. The regurgitant blood flow can be seen in this echocardiogram. In mitral regurgitation, pulses are strong, not weak, so long as ejection fraction is normal. S1 is diminished or soft and represents inadequate apposition of mitral reflex. A2 component may be early and if there is pulmonary hypertension too, then P2 component will occur late. So S2 as a whole will be widely split. S3 may be heard and felt due to increased diastolic flow rate. Also, the murmur of aortic stenosis cannot be holosystolic as the aortic valve does not open with S1. The murmur of aortic stenosis occurs after S1 and ends well before S2. Compare the murmur and echocardiogram of MR with that of aortic stenosis. The most common cause of mitral regurgitation is mitral valve prolapse. Also, the causes of an acute MR include papillary muscle rupture as in myocardial infarction, blunt chest wall trauma, infective endocarditis. Causes of chronic MR on the other hand include degenerative mitral valve disease, rheumatic heart disease, extensive mitral annular calcification, and dilated cardiomyopathy. A 42-year-old male patient with history of chronic hepatitis B viral infection and liver cirrhosis presents with abdominal distension. You listen to their precordium and this is what you hear. This is most likely an innocent murmur. Flow murmurs are also referred to as innocent, physiologic and benign murmurs. They are the most common form of systolic murmurs. They are typically systolic, short, soft, crescendo, decrescendo or diamond shaped or early peaking murmurs, meaning the intensity of murmur increases during acceleration of blood flow early in the systole, the crescendo part, then the intensity decreases with the later deceleration of the flow, the decrescendo part, thus giving crescendo-decrescendo configuration as can be seen in the phonocardiogram. Listen again to a patient with systolic flow murmur. Flow murmurs are present in up to 60% of patients with 90% being associated with normal echocardiography. Flow murmurs in adults are usually the result of hyperdynamic circulation. An increase in blood flow across a structurally normal valve will cause turbulence and an associated murmur. Common causes of hyperdynamic circulation include anemia, fever, exercise, pregnancy and sepsis. In fact, a pulmonary flow murmur is present in 80% of normal pregnant women. There is an old medical saying, judge a murmur by the company it keeps. 
So the innocence of a flow murmur does not depend upon the duration or intensity of the murmur, but on the absence of other abnormal findings. Listen again to a patient with systolic flow murmur. Flow murmurs are not caused by structural abnormalities, do not have any hemodynamic repercussions and require no further workup. Flow murmurs are almost always associated with a well-preserved S2 with normal split. The presence of a diminished or absent S2 should raise concern for pathologic murmur. A 62-year-old male patient presents with exertional syncope. You auscultate their chest and this is what you hear. So this is ejection systolic murmur, most likely due to aortic stenosis. Other physical findings and ultimately echocardiography will confirm it. The murmur of aortic stenosis is one of the most common murmurs, especially in the older population. The murmur of aortic stenosis is ejection systolic, crescendo decrescendo in shape and harsh in quality. It is heard best in the aortic area that is the second right intercostal space. It is radiated equally to the both carotids. Listen again to a patient with murmur of aortic stenosis. Echocardiography in a patient with aortic stenosis will show significant calcification of aortic valve and lack of leaflet mobility. Left ventricular hypertrophy may also be noted. Most common causes of aortic stenosis are calcification of trileaflet if the patient is older than 50 and congenital bicuspid valve if the patient is younger than 50. Another important cause is rheumatic heart disease. The murmur of aortic stenosis may radiate to the apex too with musical quality, giving the impression that the patient has mitral regurgitation too, when the patient has not. This effect is known as Galavardin phenomenon, named after the French cardiologist Louis Galavardin. Also, you may have noticed that innocent murmur and the murmur of aortic stenosis both are systolic crescendo decrescendo murmurs. But as I mentioned earlier, always judge a murmur by the company it keeps. The accompanying physical signs and clinical features in aortic stenosis will be different from those of other murmurs. For example, the patients of aortic stenosis may have narrow pulse pressure due to reduced stroke volume. Arterial pulses in aortic stenosis may be weak, delayed, and slow rising, named as pulses parvus et tardus. They will be soft and single S2 as LV systole is prolonged due to stenotic aortic valve. So A2 occurs late alongside P2. And as the severity of the murmur increases, A2 may occur after P2 causing paradoxical splitting of S2. Splitting of hard sounds will be covered in the later videos. Listen again to a patient with aortic stenosis murmur. <laughs> Compare normal echocardiography with the echocardiography of a patient with aortic stenosis. A 32-year-old female patient undergoing maintenance hemodialysis twice weekly presents with shortness of breath for two days. You auscultate her chest and this is what you hear. So this is a three-component pericardial friction rub. A pericardial friction rub is generated as a result of an inflamed pericardium, that is pericarditis. Friction rubs are high-pitched, scratching or grating sounds. They are best heard with diaphragm of stethoscope over left sternal border. The intensity of friction rub may increase on pressing the diaphragm firmly against the patient's chest or if the patient is asked to stop breathing for a moment. This later process the suspension of respiration can also help to differentiate between pericardial and pleural rubs, as pleural rubs will occur only during respiration. Rubs consist of one to three sounds that may be mistaken for different murmurs, especially holosystolic murmur if it is a two-component friction rub. Classically, there are three components to a pericardial friction rub that correlate with atrial contraction, so you may hear it just before S1, during ventricular systole, between S1 and S2, and during the rapid filling phase of diastole right after S2. 
If there is a two component friction rub, you will hear only the systolic and the diastolic components. Compare a patient with a three component friction rub with a patient having two component friction rub. Remember that there is no correlation between pericardial friction rub and pericardial effusion. Pericardial friction rub can occur regardless whether it is mild, moderate or massive pleural effusion. Pericarditis is most commonly due to idiopathic cause, but it can also occur due to infectious causes as in viral, pyogenic and tuberculosis infections. In fact, tuberculosis is one of the leading causes of pericarditis in developing countries. Known infectious causes of pericarditis include myocardial infarction, uremia, malignancy and connective tissue diseases. So that was all about the most common heart sounds. The rest of the heart sounds are less common than these and will be covered in another video.